Hi, I'm Rev. Jake Zabe, and welcome to Children's Bible Stories. Alright children, today is Trinity Sunday. That's the day in the church year that we celebrate the doctrine of the Trinity. That God is not just one person, but three persons. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so for this video, we're going to discuss the doctrine of the Trinity, and we're going to do so by looking at the Trinity Shield. So the Trinity Shield is this special symbol, which is like a triangle in a shield shape, and it has the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit on that, and then it has God in the middle. And this shield is used to help explain how we understand the doctrine of the Trinity. Now, the exact origins of this symbol, we don't know exactly where it came from. The earliest kind of form of the Trinity shield was first found in 1109 by a theologian named Petros Alfronsi. However, his version was not the complete Trinity shield. It only really had the outside triangle of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit explaining how they were united. The version of the Trinity shield that we know today, which has the God in the middle and all the is, nots, and is on it. The very first depiction of that comes from a book known as A Compendium of the History of the Genealogy of Christ, written by Peter of Poitiers in the year 1210 AD. So, this symbol of the Trinity Shield dates back to roughly around the 1100s and the 1200s AD. Although it wasn't really used that much until about the 1400s, 1500s when it became a much more popular, common used symbol. And so the symbol on it has the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And you can see here that there are words written on the shield. Along the outside lines, we have the word is not, whereas the words on the inner lines say is. That's because we confess that the Father is God, but the Father is not the Son, nor is the Father the Holy Spirit. Likewise, the Son is God, but the Son is not the Father, and the Son is not the Holy Spirit. And likewise, the Holy Spirit is God, but the Holy Spirit is not the Father, and the Holy Spirit is not the Son. This is the doctrine of the Trinity, that all three members of the Trinity are fully God, but they are also separate from the other two members of the Trinity. So at this point, I would like to discuss a few things that we do not teach regarding the doctrine of the Trinity. And to do so, we're going to look at four different heresies or categories of heresies. The first heresy that we reject is tritheism. Tri meaning three and the from the word theos meaning God. Tritheism is the belief that the three members of the Trinity were each three different gods. So tritheism, three godism. There have been many different heretical groups in the past that had taught this, but one of the more popular groups is the Valentinians. Uh, started by Valentinius. He was a Gnostic Christian, so he believed in a lot of silly, crazy things that are not in the Bible, but one thing that the Valentinians taught is that there were three gods, that the Father was God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. However, this is contrary to the Bible, because the Bible says that the Lord our God, the Lord is one. In 
Christianity, we believe that there is one God, even though there are three persons. So we reject tritheism, which says that there are three gods. Now, the next heresy is the category of subordinationism. So subordinationism taught that only God the Father, or in some cases, the Father and the Son were God, but that the other members of the Trinity weren't God. So, subordinationism is the idea that there is only one God and that the other persons of the Trinity are created beings, that they aren't fully God. So, groups that taught this were guys like Arius, who started the Arians, who said that the Son and the Spirit were creations of God who were like God, but they weren't God himself. So Arius would say the Son and the Spirit were of like substance of the Father, but they weren't of the same substance as the Father. There was also a group known as the Macedonians. Uh, so this is Macedonianism, who did teach that Jesus was divine, but they said the Holy Spirit was created and that he wasn't God. And then there are also groups like the Ebionites, who taught that the Father was God, and that Jesus was just an ordinary man. Other groups like the rabbinic Jews and the Muslims also hold to this similar teaching, teaching that there is only one God, who we would call God the Father, and they would say the Son and the Spirit are created beings, and groups like the Ebionites, the Jews and the Muslims would say Jesus is just an ordinary man. Now all these subordination heresies are also contrary to Scripture. To reject the Ebionites, the Jews, and the Muslims, Scripture is very clear that Jesus is God. We read in the Gospel of John that Jesus is with God and that he is God. And so, Scripture is quite clear that the Son and the Spirit and the Father are all God. And so, firstly, we've rejected that there are three different gods. And we've also rejected the idea that the Son and the Spirit can't be God. So now we ask ourselves, well, how is it possible to have one God but three persons? Well, this is where we're coming to two other types of heresies. The first being the modalists. And this was taught by fellows like Sibelius and the Sibelians. Modalism teaches that there is only one God and one person but that God jumps between the different persons. So one day he might be God the Father, another day he might be God the Son, and another day he might be God the Holy Spirit. But such a teaching is also contrary to Scripture because the Scripture is clear that even though there is only one God, the three persons of the Trinity are separate. There is many parts of the Bible that talk about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, at the baptism of Jesus, the Father spoke from the clouds, Jesus was in the water, and the Holy Spirit descended in the form of a dove, showing us that all three members of the Trinity are separate. Also, in the Gospel of John, it says that Jesus, the Word, not only is God, but is also with God, so that the Son is distinct from the Father. So, therefore, modalism is also rejected by Holy Scripture. And so then we come to the final heresy we're going to discuss, which is partialism. Partialism was never really taught historically in the church. The term itself only first emerges in the 1840s, so very recently. There are some people like St. Patrick of Ireland, who, when he attempted to try and explain the Holy Trinity, using the analogy of the three-leaf clover, essentially taught partialism, although he was not trying to teach partialism, he just fell into that mistake. And there were some heretics like Paul of Samosata, who founded the Samotians, who believed that God was kind of like a man, and that the word Jesus was just the voice of the Father, and that the Spirit was the soul of the Father, and so essentially this would be a kind of form of partialism. Essentially, partialism is the idea that 
there is one God and three persons, but that each person of the Trinity is only part God, hence the term partialism. They would say that God the Father is one-third God, God the Son is one-third God, and God the Holy Spirit is one-third God. But this is also contrary to Scripture because the Bible tells us that each member of the Trinity is fully God. Paul says concerning Jesus that the fullness of God dwelt in Jesus. Not part of God, but all of God dwelt in Jesus. So you can see here that we reject tritheism, subordinationism, modalism, and partialism, because all of those four heresies are contrary to what Scripture says. Scripture teaches that there is only one God, but that the Father is fully God, the Son is fully God, and the Holy Spirit is fully God. Yet, the Father is not the Son or the Spirit, the Son is not the Father or the Spirit, and the Spirit is not the Father or the Son. There is one God, but three persons, and each person is fully God. So, children, I hope that helps explain the doctrine of the Trinity and what we teach and what we reject. I've been your host, Reverend Jake Zabel. Goodbye and God bless.